This chapter will focus on performing common administrative tasks within Dundas Dashboard. Specifically, we're going to discuss user accounts, roles within Dundas Dashboard, and project management administration. Let's start off by going to the Administration Management area. A user account is similar to a user account in Windows. In fact, you can see here in the menu we support Windows users and groups out of the box. For this tutorial, we will focus on local users to simplify the tutorial, but the same principles would apply to Windows users and groups as well. Let's start off by creating a new local user. This is standard login information, so we will not go into too much detail here. However, it is important to point out that all fields need to be filled out. Let's look at this option here. By checking this off, the user account created will have full access to all resources within Dundas Dashboard. Typically, you would not want to check this off, so let's leave it. This option will disable the account. This is useful when a person doesn't need access at the moment. In our case, we don't want to disable the account. Let's move on to assigning roles to this account. We need to provide a backdrop here to understand these roles. Dundas Dashboard takes a collaborative role-based approach to designing and developing dashboards. With this in mind, we have separated out roles based on real-world segregation of tasks and responsibilities. Of course, an individual could be responsible for all aspects of the development effort, but let's go over a role-based approach for explanation purposes. The first role is the viewer role. This is generally assigned to those only viewing dashboards and do not need to access the development areas. The checkbox here sets whether or not this viewer has the ability to log in all the time. To understand this better, we have to explain the viewing license in more detail. Dundas Dashboard uses a concurrent floating viewing license model. That is, there is a discrete pool of licenses available for use by anyone who has viewing privileges. For example, let's say you have five licenses, but 10 users have access to viewing dashboards. If five users are logged in to view the dashboards at the same time, the sixth person will not be able to access the dashboards until one or more logged in users log out. Note that these five users can be any combination of the 10 using the dashboard. Now, getting back to this checkbox, if you check this box, this guarantees this user will always have access to viewing dashboards. Using the above as an example, if there are five viewing licenses available, one of them will be used up by this account. This leaves four viewing licenses to float around for use. To help with managing the number of viewer licenses available, this number here shows how many viewers are guaranteed access versus the actual number of viewer licenses available. To figure out how many floating licenses are available, just take the total minus the number of dedicated. Okay, that was a lot of food for thought, so you may want to take some time to digest that. Let's move on to the dashboard designer role. By choosing this role, the user will only have access to dashboard designer areas. These areas include the dashboard designer and resources. Here is an example of what a dashboard designer would see. Finally, we have the role of a dashboard developer. This role encompasses the many potential tasks assigned to an information worker. Depending on the tasks assigned to the user, you could check off the appropriate checkbox. Let's go over each one. The Data Connector Analyst is responsible for setting up connections to your organization's data sources, such as MS SQL and Oracle. Here's a typical screen for a person who is just assigned this task. Next is the Virtual Data Structure Analyst. This person is tasked with preparing the data so the data is friendlier for creating business metrics. The Dimension Analyst is responsible for creating the dimensions needed for the business metrics. The Business Metrics Analyst is tasked with building KPIs and data sets. Finally, the Dashboard Analyst has the same responsibilities of a Dashboard Designer. In most cases, the dashboard developer is tasked with preparing the data to defining the business metrics, so let's check the following boxes off. Okay, let's leave this final tab for later, as we need to go over groups first. For now, save the user. We're going to cover the concept of user groups now. User groups simplify assigning access privileges to various assets created in Dundas Dashboard. For example, say you've created user accounts for your executive team and they are privy to all information to an organization. 
Rather than assigning each user access to the dashboards created within Dundas Dashboard, you would just create a group first and then give this group access to those dashboards. Let's run with this example. Start by creating a new group like so. Let's call this group the executive team. Now we need to add the users to this group by doing the following. Remove an account by taking this action. You can even add other groups created, but in our case, we don't want to do that. Once we're happy with the settings, we need to save it. Okay, let's go back to the user account we created and check out the Groups tab. Now you can manage what groups this user should be part of by adding and removing them there. Let's move on to Project Administration. This is where you would delete and or rename projects. In addition, you would set the security on the project here by doing the following. We went over a lot of information here, but hopefully this will give you a better understanding of how to administer Dunnes Dashboard. This concludes our tutorial on performing administration activities within Dundas Dashboard.